Thank you. So welcome everybody to the second and last lecture by Dr. Natalia Soboleva about um, uh, gender studies, this time in the household and uh, yesterday it was in the uh, workplace. And um, I suggest that we share screen. Now we lost uh, Natalia's camera as well and uh, start the second lecture. Okay. Yes, the camera is here. Fantastic. So, Natalia, up to you to share screen and start your talk to have time also for the discussion. Okay, let me, let me first share, share the screen. Okay. Now you can, you can see just... Okay, just um, just to check. Very good. It you is full and, screen today. And Very good. Is, and it is moving, right? Yes, so it, it perfect, perfect. Side. Please go ahead. No problem. Thank you. So, hello, everybody. It's my pleasure to give you today the second late, um, lecture about the gender division of labor. Yesterday, we talked about the gender division of labor in the labor market. Today, we'll talk about the gender division of labor in the household. So, the outline of the lecture is as follows. First, I will take talk about the statistic reg regarding the gender division of labor in the household. Then I will talk about, briefly talk about uh, the changes within the era of COVID-19. Um, and uh, then I will also give an outline of the, some social policies regarding the parental leave, leave and maternity leave. Then I will give the theoretical explanations about the gender differences and I will provide some sociological theories. And then it will talk about the gender attitudes in domestic sphere. Last time we covered gender attitudes in public sphere. And finally, I'll say what we can do with the situation and what social policies can be implemented. So first uh, thing I would like to uh, emphasize that we have uh, the gender division of labor in the public sphere and we have the gender division of labor in the domestic sphere. Although these are two different lectures and two different topics, these two spheres are very closely interrelated because um, um, the women does much, women in general do much more in the domestic sphere. They have much more responsibilities and duties with the household. Uh, they spend much more time with the children and hence um, uh, somehow um, it doesn't give him the best their, their best opportunities to perform on the labor market. Uh, now there is in general in the world there is a tendency for the increasing of female participation in the labor market. In general, female labor force participation rates have increased significantly in, in the recent decades and it refers to European countries, it refers to the world countries. We have seen yesterday some of the statistics. The, Mm, then there are more and more dual earner households where both uh, both partners contribute to household income. But still, uh, for example, in the European Union, around 30 to uh, one third of women are engaged in part-time part -time work. That is compared to only 10% of men. So women do work, but they work less. And 29 of women employed part-time indicated that unpaid care work itself was the main reason for working part-time and only 6% of men cite the same cause. So uh, one of the main causes for women working part-time is the very, stro uh, very strong engagement in the household. So one of them, how we can, uh, care work is one, is an important uh, um, term that re uh, reflects the women engagement, the men or women engagement in the in, in the housework. It includes all activities and occupations that are direct or indirect in, uh, involve care processes and uh, provision of personal services. So mm -hmm. here, um, this refers to the care of children, and he, here also refers of caring of elder relatives. So it means that the person cares about somebody. They can be their child, it, uh, it can be their parents, and so on. 
And you can see that uh, there is an enormous gap in the European Union between men and women, like 92% uh, of women and only 68% are regular carers, it's those who are doing this several times a week. And uh, um, about uh, 80, more than 80, the majority of women actually are daily carers compared to the less than a half of men. Also some important statistics, like women living in couples with children spend more than double the daily time on care work spent by those living in couples without children. So um, those when there are children, women spend even more time with the housework. However, even if a woman doesn't have children, and even if she's living alone, she still spends more time for the household and for, for care work. So this is the situation. And daily time spent on unpaid care work is higher in the childbearing age group. That is uh, uh, very logical. And this results the high gen uh, gender care uh, This results that here is the high gender care gap than in other categories. And um, also, this is important that women who have good jobs sometimes they can um, they sometimes can outsource somehow and they can hire some, some internal help and for them the situation is not ideal but it's better but the women who are in non-standard employment and who are in low paid jobs for them the burden of un unpaid care work is even higher. Also, it is hard for women in temporary jobs or with jobs with no formal contract. So, and um, the main point here that um, the engagement on one hand, there is engagement in the house, um, in, in the household engagement in the care work, and on the other hand, is in the engagement in the labor market. And so, when the person is when the woman is better engaged and has a better situation in the labor market she can spend less uh, she can somehow better organize her care work but it still doesn't uh, go go that well always so in this slide you can see the unpaid care work and paid, care, paid work across countries so the, uh, the left column is for women and the right column is for men so first what we can see that and um, in purple and uh, in dark purple, you can see the unpaid care work and in green, you can see paid work. So we can see here that for men that men do work. Uh, and um, what is good here in this graph that you can see the total number of, uh, the total number of hours for both unpaid, uh, unpaid work and paid work. And in all the continents and um, um, women spend in general spend more minutes per day for, for for some type of work, being this unpaid or paid work. So in, in this is you can say that in general women uh, women work more. And the gap is the least pronounced uh, gap is in Americas, and the strongest gap is in Arab states, which uh, which is really uh, very easy to explain. Uh, which is very easy to explain. And also we can look at the gaps, um, the purple gaps between un uh, between men and women within regarding the unpaid care work. And we can see that also the, the strongest gap is in the Arab states, which is logical. And um, also, but it is also, it's rather, it's still it's the, with the exception of America, so we always also see this gap in other countries, it's also rather strong and it's seen. So despite that uh, lots of uh, social policies are introduced, despite that work-life balance for women is one of the main um, aims of the um, different international organizations, the gap persists. Okay, there is some slides uh, that show in different types of um, types of activity for men and for women for men and women. So in yellow and orange you can see men, and in blue you can uh, you can see women, and you can see the gaps across the countries. Here mainly there um, there is the data European countries. Not all the countries are present, but in general. Um, the situation is not expected to be very <laughs> very different across uh, across other countries. We can see that in Turkey, Muslim in Muslim countries, the situation is the worst. That uh, the um, men spend much less than women at household care. But even in 
in Finland, you can see some gap, although it's rather uh, strong. And the gap is absolutely stronger in Southern European countries and in Eastern European countries. Well, this is um, um, time spent on f f food management and cleaning dwelling and uh, dwelling from men and women. And we can see here that the owner, um, that, um, in this uh, even in, the, in this sphere, are mainly done by women than by men. That is, uh, uh, that is, uh, um, you cannot say that it is surprised. Also, there is uh, shares for laundry and ironing. We can see that there is a very, very, um, was, uh, very huge difference between men and women, and uh, also with this uh, shopping and services, women do much more than men, and. Um, here you can see this uh, child care teaching and uh, reading and uh, the gaps in child uh, child care except teaching reading and talking and uh, the gaps in teaching reading and talking with the child. What is important here? We, um, the important um, the important thing is that uh, the teaching reading and talking with the child does refer to the household work, but it's the easy part of it and. Actually, there are some articles and there is some data that, that has shown that when men do some household responsibilities, when they um, do help women, usually they quite often they are doing less uh, complicated stuff. Uh, quite often they contribute to teaching, to reading, to talking with a child. They also can sometimes they go for a walk uh, uh, with a child, for instance, when a woman cleans the plant. So, Somehow we can say that they are doing less qualified uh, jobs uh, within the within the household, and so we can see that uh, here also we also the gap exists. But uh, for instance, it's a, a bit less than in uh, concerning other areas. And uh, the only thing which do men do more is um, participation in construction. This is a men's job, but it's also this is usually this is not regular jobs, and so here men are engaged more than women. Well, there is um, and also there is a differences in 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 gardening, and here sometimes uh, we can see different things across countries. Sometimes it's uh, uh, gardening or other pet cares, and some countries here even men do more than women that maybe looks like um, like a hobby for instance in spain and in italy then greece like here is uh, here's the situation is a bit different uh why did i show you all this grass uh, because i would like i wanted to show you that the um, division of labor in the household and in also in doing the household labor could be very different and um, there are different activities that are different that are more or less done by men and women and actually women are more often do more complicated stuff more difficult stuff more less pleasant stuff and so on so what could be done uh, there, there are some social policies regarding the situation and uh, regarding the situation in the household uh, so this is the usually, of course, these are women who give birth to children and they can take more breaks from the labor market and they have, to, and, um, and this hinders their career development. But some um, social policies could be introduced that both men and um, women can do it. I would like to show you some statistics uh, about the social policies. First is the maternity leave in weeks. So maternity leave refers to the number of weeks on child protective leave available for mothers just before and after the childbirth. So this is only um, to, um, to prepare to give birth for child and to give birth for child. And we see here that um, uh, the interesting thing that there is no maternity leave at all in the uh, United States. And here we see in the number of weeks, it's the highest in the United Kingdom in Greece and in, in Ireland. Here it's much more than average. And um, also it's rather, Russia is not here, but it's also um, rather, um, rather high in Russia, but in general countries, 
European country, different countries do not um, differ much much on the maternity leave. But maternity leave it's just it's a very short time. There is also another point that there is a parental leave with shop protection. Here we are not talking about the financial protection. So this is the time when the um, when the uh, when the firms have to keep their jobs um, for the uh, for the mothers for the uh, for the mothers and the uh, yes for the mothers. So for instance, in Russia, Russia is not here in the statistics, but in Russia the situation is, unfollow, is as follows: so for one year, the mother is paid some money, and for other two years, she is not paid any money, but the job the job is kept for her, so she can return to the same um, workplace or the, to the equal workplace. So this time it is the highest in Pol um, Poland, uh, Germany, and Lithuania and Estonia, and again in Switzerland, there is no parental leave. And there was no parent. Um, Parental legal job protection in Mexico, and it's also small in the United States, much lower than the average state for European Union. Also, there is um, statistics about the total paid maternity and parental leave. Here we are talking about the paid maternity and uh, parental leave, and so where the women get some money. This could be not the same amount of money she could have earned in the labor market, but still. There is something. So here we see again that there is Finland and also there are Eastern European countries like Slovakia, Estonia, Hungary, where this time is longer than in other countries. And this type of policies, how, what could we say about them? On one hand, they help they help mothers um, if there is a long belief. They help mothers to to cope with the situation, to cope with the childbirth, especially when there is some um, financial assistance. But on, on the other on the other hand, if it is reserved for mothers, it will be mostly mothers who are doing this, and this will in general strengthen gender inequality. So in some countries. Um, the father, paid father-specific leaves was introduced, and this refers to the number of paid weeks reserved exclusively, exclusively for fathers. So mother can take it, either father takes it, or in, in this leave just disappears. Interesting thing that we always think about Sweden and Iceland when we talk, think about the parental leave, but the interesting thing that the longest father paid father's specific parental leave was in Korea and Japan. But although it is like that, uh, this um, a policy didn't lead to increase in gender equality and increase of uh, the more in equal division of labor within the household in these countries. Uh, this could be due to different facts. First, um, the cultural and the cultural and tra tradition, some Cultural, cultural background of Japan and Korea, there the um, attitudes to gender equality are very traditional, and that is why just um, introducing uh, such policy didn't help. And um, so women do not have, they have uh, very traditional gender attitudes. They do not want to be that successful in the labor market for them, family is more important. And even in other research, um, about the modernization, it was shown that, for instance, there are different um, aspects of uh, modernization, for instance, like approval of democracy, approval of different type of, of type, type of behavior, importance of freedom and other aspects. And among all these aspects, there is uh, attitudes to gender equality, which, uh, which is one of the, um, one, uh, one of the, indicators of value shift. And this is in countries like Korea, Japan, although they sky rather well in the, in the different uh, values, uh, although they're moving to more modern, more modern, less traditional values, they score rather low gender quality. So this is uh, like <laughs> a traditional thing. But although it's like that, this uh, father, well, paid father specifically was, was 
shown that, uh, for instance, in, it was introduced in Sweden and in other countries, and it was shown that it, it works quite well in uh, Europe. And although we do not have, and we will never have the gender equality, it's the problem. It actually contributes to more engagement of uh, fathers in the house on men and fathers in the household that they do more housework and so on. Also, what is important here that, uh, for instance, if this paid father specifically, if, if it's not an obligatory thing, nobody will take it. For instance, in Russia, fathers as well as mothers can take it, but very low share of fathers ever take this parental leave. But there is another problem, for instance, if in Russia father does take, this parental leave, it's not considered normal. It could be difficult for him to find a job and so on. And the same refers to this uh, father's engagement in uh, more female, uh, female uh, in the occupations that are considered female. If a woman goes into the occupation that is considered male, in general, it's, um, um, it's um, it's portrayed better in the society, their attitude towards it's, it's better in the society than when a man is doing a women's job. So that's um, that's one of the problems that exists here. Well, what happened to the COVID? Of course, we cannot see all the consequences because sometimes the consequences are more long term, but we can already see something. First, that women were affected more than men. They lost employment more often due to different things. They said already that it was due to the engagement in the sectors of the economy that were more hit by, cri um, by crisis. Um, but also, uh, it was shown that women were nearly three times as likely, uh, mothers were nearly three times as likely as fathers to report that they took on the majority of all additional unpaid care work related to school or childcare facility closures. And especially this refers to the mothers who have uh, children under the age uh, 12. So they, when, it, when we look at the distribution of the household labor, these are mainly mothers who are doing, uh, the, doing the most part. Some studies have shown that mothers and fathers have proportionally increased um, their division, um, their home and the share of household they're doing, but as mothers were Doing, were doing more, they were doing much more, um, much more, even, even much more. So mothers increased more their participation in their household duties. Also, what is interesting and it's what's important that mothers of children under age 12, they were in the group that more, they all, more often employed from, moved from employed to non-employed status. So when there was a choice, uh, so sometimes then, as I already said before, the engagement in the household just prevented them from, from keeping from keeping their job, and this happened uh, less often to fathers. Um, okay, we'll take, talk about this later. So here we can see some also some statistics. Here we can see the share of parents with at least one child under twelve who report that they took on all the majority of the additional care work caused by school or child care facility closures. And um, so uh, the columns are mothers, and here you can see the dots, uh, there are fathers, and you can see that in all the country, like here is um, Spain, here is Portugal, here, here and this is Germany, in all the, and this is Denmark, in all the countries, except maybe in the, in the Netherlands, uh, the, shares, uh, the tendency is the same, but um, the discrepancy is, um, is a bit lower. There's for mothers who, who do more, who did the majority of the additional work. Because uh, for instance, when schools are closed, uh, lots of parents, uh, there was even a joke that parents work as teachers and so somebody had to take the responsibility. There were different viewpoints. Sometimes it was, um, there were the opinions and there were interviews that mothers took more responsibilities, but they were more prepared for it because uh, they already did a lot in the household and uh, they already um, engaged a lot with the children. And um, 
they were more prepared to do even more, but fathers uh, were not, do not do often that uh, kind of stuff. And uh, when they had to work in different conditions, for instance, move to teleworking and work at home where children just don't give them opportunities to work, that could be harder for them. But um, in general, mothers did, mothers did more. So here you can see the gen gender gap in unpaid caregiving. Uh, so when the one of the, uh, when both parents are employed, even when um, um, even when both parents are employed, uh, again there's the situation that my um, women are doing more of the house or housework. Also, there was some other information that mothers, and especially mothers, but also women experience, more often experience stress and decrease in well-being, and they are more likely to worry about, uh, um, they more often experience stress, they more often exp worry about this uh, managing and combining all the opportunities. Those who have small children, those who have small children under 12, they more often claim that they need some government support to cope, cope with the situation. But in general, in countries where the family policies are better, the situation, it was before the COVID and it was after the COVID, the situation is better. So uh, then I will turn to the, some of the explanations of gender equality, actually it refers to both um, lectures, so why men and women are different. And there are different uh, different explanations, and one of them is the sex segregation theory that according to which that women and men have different tastes, aspirations, and skills, and this leads to different motivations. This leads to a women's desire to do most of the household, to control more um, things in the household, and to, to, um, to do less in the labor market. At first, uh, some time ago, it was really the case for the countries. Now the situation has changed. Second is the institutional theory that the positions of men and women mainly depend upon employment legislation and other social policies. So according to this theory, well, with introduce, uh, introducing different social policies, the policies of parental leave, uh, uh, different policies in the labor market, this uh, could lead to less differences men and women. Both theories exist and both are right to the extent, but none of them can fully explain the reality. Also, there are some conceptions that more regard the division of the labor in the household. So for instance, there is a theory of a relative resource approach um, that was invented by Harry Baker that there is a, those, uh, those who is more successful in, in in the labor market has a high negotiation power and so he he or she does less household uh, household duties and so as most men are more successful in the labor market they should do less uh, in the household this is true to some extent but it also does not work all the time because sometimes there is a situation when even when women is more successful in the labor market even if she earns more money and as we have seen she's still doing most of the household work or if they for instance if the men and women have uh, equal, um, rather um, jobs of equal status of uh, have a more or less equal salary still women are doing more and uh, so we have this gender role theory that individual attitudes towards gender roles um, shape personal preferences for behavior. And so, and these individual attitudes towards gender roles depend upon the culture, upon the tradition, upon the socialization in the family. And so, which um, and according to this, um, the share of paid and unpaid workers distributed. So this theory also explains partly because there are cultural differences between, for instance, between countries with different religious tradition, between different cultures that uh, wouldn't be so easily corrected with the help of social policy. Here I will skip, I think. Also, there is um, there are some interesting approaches. Um, this uh, refer more to general attitudes that sometimes um, 
although gender uh, attitudes toward gender equality main it's the, like it's like values that are formed in the childhood in the process of early civilization and that it's difficult to change them it's true to some extent but still they are, can change during life and they can change first uh, in during the socialization process and uh, they can change based on some uh, in, um, uh, based on the changes in social policy and institutions but actually there is an interesting approach that is called doing gender that according to which for instance if a man loses his job he does not he is not becoming uh, more egalitarian he doesn't have more uh, um, he doesn't have more traditional gender ages. He has more egalitarian gender ages because for him it's more important to, in this case, to strengthen um, the gender and uh, strengthen his identity. So now I will turn to the gender role attitudes. Last time we spoke about the gender role attitudes in the public sphere. Today I will focus more on the gender role attitudes in the domestic sphere. So like uh, the gender role attitudes are uh, moving from traditional to egalitarian and um, so we are um, in the huge cross-cultural studies, there were questions regarding gender role attitudes. For instance, in European really study, the last race was conducted just from 2017, actually 2018 or 19, just before the um, coronavirus pandemic. There uh, were questions like when a mother works for pay, the children suffer. A job is all right, but what we, what most women really want is home and children. And all in all, family life suffers when a woman has a full time job. In general, and um, there's an item that men's job is to earn money and women's jobs is to look after home and family. This item belongs both to the gender role attitudes in the public sphere and domestic sphere, but uh, if uh, we talk about the statistical analysis, in my opinion, it refers more to the gender role attitudes in the domestic sphere. So if um, if a person agrees with these items, that means that he or she has more traditional attitudes. And if he disagrees, that means that he or she has more egalitarian gender role attitudes. This, um, so this, the next graph is based on these three questions. And we can see that um, uh, this is data only for Europe. We can see that um, um, that is uh, can go from zero. Uh, um, the index uh, can go from zero to three. We can see that in Nordic countries, the gender attitudes are most uh, egalitarian, and in former Soviet countries like Georgia, Armenia, and uh, Azerbaijan, they are most traditional. What is interesting here that um, Mm. Um, it's not, uh, I, I didn't show this in the slides, but what's also interesting here, if you compare it with the gender role, uh, attitudes in, um, gender role attitudes in public sphere, gender role attitudes in domestic sphere are more polar polarized by different, across different groups than gender role attitudes in the public sphere. Both of them are mostly polarized by education, they also polarized by the level of income. So those who are high educated have higher level of income, have um, um, less often attend religious services, they have more egalitarian general attitudes. But this is um, if um, this is true, uh, this is the, the true to both uh, general attitudes in domestic sphere and general attitudes in public sphere. But the, uh, if you talk about the domestic sphere, these differences are more pronounced. But there is, um, regarding gender, uh, there, is, there is an exception. Uh, the polarization of gender role attitudes in the domestic sphere is almost, is, is almost absent and it is stronger for gender role attitudes in public sphere. So men and women in general do agree who has to perform uh, most duties in the domestic sphere, who has to spend time with children, but they disagree more about the female capabilities <laughs> in the public sphere. Uh, maybe there are some questions in the chat. Oh, it's just... oh. 
I think it's best to take everything to the at the end. Ah, okay, okay. It's uh, just seeing that there are more and more questions. I will, I will look at the end. Yeah. Yes. Also, there is a share of those who disagree that the man's job is to earn money and women's job is to look after home and children. When we took uh, fake individual items, <laughs> uh, in general, there is a high, uh, there is a, there are huge differences. And we see like on the one hand, um, there are Nordic countries and also other Western European countries that mostly people do disagree with this. But in many Eastern European countries also, um, Many, um, there is a much lower share of those who disagree with it, only about uh, one third, a bit more than one third. So, this is the questions for World Value Survey. The formulations are a bit different. Just um, here we can see um, here we can see more countries. Maybe it's difficult to see all, all the names, but still. The, the main thing is like to see the distribution that they could be different. You can look after the presentation. So that this preschool child suffers with the working mothers. Uh, those who are um, there are the, sh the share of those who disagree. Again, we have, but here also we have Taiwan and Indonesia. In these countries, there is a high share of um, those who disagree. Also, although the Japan is also there is a high share of those who disagree with this item, although they have more traditional gender attitudes here, it could be explained by different things because maybe it's okay when the, when the mother works, but it, it is not okay if she works too much. So this could be different. But and there is and there are some countries in which the share of those who disagree that the preschool child suffers with the working mother is very low. And for me, this is a very interesting item. Being a housewife is as fulfilling as working for pay. Because uh, for me, it doesn't reflect either traditional or egalitarian gender attitudes. It just shows the value of the, um, the, uh, of the household work. For instance, is it as important as work in the labor market or is it, is it less important? And so that is why it that goes along. And um, here the pictures, um, here the picture is a bit different because, for instance, in countries like Serbia, Roma Romania, Nigeria, there are a lot of people that disagree that being a housewife is as fulfilling as working for pay. In some countries, the share of those individuals is lower. I haven't gone deep into this item, but for me, it's uh, um, it's a very, it's a very interesting item, and it reflects a very important. It reflects the importance of the, um, it reflects the importance of household labor in itself. For instance, uh, even in countries like New Zealand, and where the gender attitude is um, rather egalitarian, the share of this individual is uh, like. Uh, who think uh, who disagree that being a housewife is as fulfilling as working for pay is low in Germany it's uh, higher but that's a, it's a very interesting item okay I will I won't talk too much about that I will just name briefly the problems with this um, items measuring the general attitudes they were introduced for a long time ago in this cross-cultural survey. So there is always a discussion about which we should change them, whether we should uh, leave them as they, as they are, what is, what is more important, keeping the trend, or, uh, or just changing them in order they can be more accurate and more accurately reflect the current situation. Uh, so we try to change something, <laughs> but um, um, something has to, be, uh, has to be like it was, so we can observe the trends. Uh, the main problems are like they first they focus more on female roles, but on, and not on the male roles. And um, sometimes the traditional views um, perceived different and uh, differently, and there also could be different interpretations and cross culture uh, in different cultures. For uh, for instance, what does it mean work for women? It depends 
how much women do work in such countries and um, depends on cross-cultural contracts. So all these um, comparisons, they are not on one hand, they are not perfect, but still it's good to do them in, in order to observe the dynamics, in order to see the, in order to compare countries because other way we won't have anything at all. Um, there were also already some research, but very few regarding the change of gender role attitudes in the time of COVID. There are lots of um, um, possible, uh, there are um, lots of suggestions that it could be in future. There are some hypotheses, but there is very few research. For instance, in one research was shown that among couples who had been employed at the start of the pandemic, men expressed more egalitarian gender attitudes if they became unemployed, but their partners remained employed. And women expressed more traditional gender attitudes if they became unemployed and their partners remained employed. But this is just one study, and this is a short-term effect. There could be some long-term effect. For instance, um, um, there are different hypotheses. One of the hypotheses is that in countries where the gender role attitudes are rather egalitarian, they can, after this uh, COVID pandemic, after um, staying at home, or after men stay at home, their attitudes can become more egalitarian because they can understand women better after in this uh, house and after be seen and after being more engaged in the household labor. There is um, other hypothesis that in countries, for instance, where the situation was rather bad <laughs> and, uh, and there would be even high discrepancy between gender attitudes and men, of me, men and women because the women would, men would try to distance themselves. So the important things, what to do, how we can improve, reduce the gender inequality in the household. I see that there could be two basic ways uh, to do that. And um, it's much more difficult to regulate the household sphere than the sphere of the labor market because you never can control what is happening here. One of the ways is improving child care and household, housework infrastructure, like improving kitchen gardens, delivery services, laundries, dry cleaners, um, giving opportunities for home help. And uh, there could be a stronger focus of to that all the women could should all the women should have an access to this, also those who do not have money. But uh, still managing the household is a difficult and time consuming task. And even if women are responsible for that, well, they do not do it them, uh, themselves, but they have to find the childcare, they have to find the school, they have to find and talk to the housekeepers, and this this takes time. So this can uh, make the situation with women better. They, this can really reduce the number of uh, hours uh, that they spend in the household, but they will do more than men. Uh, still, they will do more than men because um, time consuming. Also, there is the sandwich generation. There are middle aged adults who have to both to take care about uh, of children and old parents. And also, also it's not the topic of this lecture, but an interesting issue because it's different, it's organized differently, caring of all the relatives is organized differently across countries because for, for instance, for uh, in some countries, it's okay if uh, you have some external help, but in some uh, countries, even in some parts of Russia, it's not considered okay, or people just don't have money and they have to care themselves, for instance, for this, all the relatives. And also usually these are still, there's uh, women who are doing this. And um, this doesn't, this um, helps women to manage, but it doesn't um, reduce the gender quality in the household. Uh, the other way is more effective is involving men in household uh, responsibilities, is given, given the opportunity of, that fathers can also take the parental leave, like in Sweden and like in other countries, that um, like it's also given more opportunities for both men and women working part-time. This could um, help to manage. This could help also the situation when the fathers, for instance, work so much that they don't see their children. That is not good. And so, like, um, good strategy is um, also given more, uh, more that men could be also involved at some periods of their life in the part-time work and women in the part-time work, so they do not um, leave the. Um, 
the labor market at all, but they continue working and they somehow share the responsibility. And this would lead to the stronger engagement. Uh, this could lead to stronger engagement men and child can house work. It wouldn't be the immediate process, um, um, but it could be the um, it, it could be one of the ways. And this could change the more uh, military and gender attitudes, and this also will change the behavior. Also, there's this coronavirus pandemic with the profound changes in lifestyle and the problem of work-life balance uh, became more, more acute. And this also could um, have consequences regarding the distribution of household responsibilities, like uh, consequences regarding labor market and future gender attitudes. Oh. And especially with regard to coronavirus pandemic, there should be special attention should be to the public investments and the good child care, education, out of school support. Although it's more, it um, um, it is still even if it won't decrease the um, inequality within the household, it would help both uh, mothers and fathers to manage the situation, and also. Um, that could be done some um, work regarding the telework that both mothers and fathers can take it and making it this telework more gender sensitive that women can work on different hours from different places and more flexible. So because sometimes um, sometimes it could become quite complicated because sometimes women do not agree to do telework and it's difficult for them to work from home because they have to combine these responsibilities. There is also another way. Sometimes telework does help to women, women to manage because they don't have, they can spare some time, but still it's, um, it's important to adapt telework to the situation. And uh, also, there should be policies regarding the strengthening of the good quality and widely accessible and affordable supports. Because, for instance, if uh, there could be situations when the family and doesn't have any money, and those who have low income potential, and for those who are my, for my family, of the migrants, and especially mothers, they should have some opportunities to deal with this situation. And uh, Finally, just um, with this father, I would like to I would like to say again a few words about father's care giving and father's parental leave. That it shows that it works different across countries. It works better in European and American than in Asian context because it depends on cultural characteristics and long-term tradition. For instance, in Sweden. Norway, Canada, Germany, and Spain. This works much better than in Japan and South Korea. And in general, this uh, father's parental leave can, on one hand, they can improve female labor force participation rate and uh, lead to more egalitarian gender attitudes. And um, also, the, um, to conclude that the COVID pandemic has um, shown that um, it has reflected the long-standing weaknesses in the country's social protection system. The problems, uh, the problems that had been before, then became even they became more acute now. And uh, general gender gap in COVID care work tends to be low in countries that have historically spent more money on family policies, spent more more money on child care, family allowances, majority and parental leave. And uh, it's also in these countries that COVID also had a strong impact upon, a strong negative impact upon the gender division in, in the household, upon the distribution of labor, upon the amount of, upon the stress, upon the amount of work done in the household, but the situation was better. And again, um, like at the end of the previous lecture, I was said uh, it's impossible to achieve full gender equality because men and women are different. They have uh, some of the theories they're saying that they have uh, different aspirations, that they biological, they have biologically differences, they have different goals. Um, and um, 
in different uh, way, uh, values, different expectations, but it's on one hand. But on the other hand, they should have equal opportunities in, in both in the labor market and in the household. So now that's all. Thank you very much for your attention and I can answer the questions. Thank you very much, Natalia. Uh, thank you, very dense, very, uh, complex, difficult to go beyond people's perceptions as well. And uh, one could not lose concentration when listening to you and uh, looking at the slides. We don't have too many things in the in the uh, chat. Adriana, Louise, and Laura. Maybe it is faster if instead of uh, reading the chat. If people can raise hands, for example, if you wish, Luis, to go first with your questions and comments, and then I look at the participants list and, and monitor other raised hands, please. Thank you, Maria, Natalia, and uh, hello to colleagues. and Happy New Year to many of you who have joined both yesterday and today's very interesting session sessions. Natalia, I like how you uh, divided this topic into these two areas. First, the challenge of gender equality in the workplace and then not forgetting the importance of the division of labor in the household. So thank you for putting those two uh, stats side by side. Uh, my question was just, uh, I think many of the statistics you show raise more questions than answers. It, it's, it's one perspective. There's so much more that one could bring for the holistic picture, but I think very much what you've had there is, is super interesting. Of course, I see that the, the general stats and it's the majority of the population is is geared to more heteronormative and individual people who are in couples, um, mother and father, and often with the child caring responsibility. My question was, I'm just curious to know what some of the stats would have shown um, reflecting individual households, be they uh, any gender um, without caring responsibility and where the individual is employed at a comfortable uh, income. Whether there we still see the contracting out of household related tasks, be they gardening, pet care, or household chores, or whether there's still a difference um, in the genders that you speak about, um, the male and female. So I know the answer isn't there. I just want to put on the table that let's not forget the, the significant amount of households that are not uh, hetero married with couples and children and, and caring responsibility. It is another sector of the population that isn't addressed. Uh, in those in those statistics. Well, thank you very much for presenting this particular angle. I think it's a difficult question. Unfortunately, I don't know this exact statistics, but um, I would say that individuals living on their own, that depends on the country they live in, and then it then depends on the money. And I would say that still, uh, I do not have the data. I, uh, so uh, I do not have the data here, so I just uh, I can look for it. <laughs> I'm afraid to, to say something wrong, but I think that men uh, also there is a tendency that men could be more ready to outsource. They could more often contract out house related services. They they could be like this. I I expect it like be like this, but I do not. I do maybe there is data. There's too much data. I just don't know it. I'm sorry. I think that men are more likely um, to contract out the household related services in general. I think that's, the, that, that's what we don't know. Agree, the statistics aren't there. So, but I think what that comes down to, it makes us more aware of whether these kind of tasks are interesting for anybody to do, irrespective of their gender. <laughs> and once that somebody has, I saw our colleague put in the chat, uh, who, who you know, doesn't contract out the services. That's one example, but there are many. You know, I'm also thinking about people who are widowed. There's so many examples that can lead to individuals who maybe once had the benefit of somebody, you know, next to them where the household work was shared or not. And um, when there's a different circumstance and there's just the one person, single dwelling household of which there are hundreds of thousands uh, in Europe like, like this, millions if you go beyond the country uh, to be seen. So just let's, let's just have that question up in our minds as to whether it's um, household chores done by gender or by financial situation where there's a power imbalance. And as you say, the employed person tends to have more negotiation into who does the less pleasant tasks of toilet cleaning mm -hmm. and gardening. Yeah. So anyway, just to put it out there, thank you, Natalia. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, maybe um, Adriana had a comment about uh, Japan and uh, mentioning in the chat that it's not necessarily um, their traditionalism. But maybe Adriana, you would like to repeat your comment or? Um, Does I, not. Thank you. Uh, not, not really. It was, it was a general comment and it actually is a comment that extends to more countries than, uh, than Japan. I think it's very difficult to uh, disentangle what it is uh, the reality and what is the answer due to pressure. And actually I would like to add a comment uh, that is how we women ourselves transmit values to our own children and how do we treat them even in our own countries at the same way and how much of this pressure comes even from ourselves. This is just a comment and it's no longer. But I mean, it's, uh, yeah. It's difficult to, to, to take these statistics and not just say yes, but, voila. Uh, absolutely right. I'm sure uh, Natalia can comment more professionally, but we all see this in uh, our families with uh, elder, older siblings or cousins or, uh, you know, every generation opens up in a, in perspective, I, I, I agree with you. It's very much cultural. But um, do you have any comment, Natalia, on um, on Adriana's comment? Or would you like to? Yes, it's very important that um, the, the general attitudes and also attitudes and um, some habits regarding household duties they largely depends on what was happening in the family. So we also transmit some of the various, even we, if we do not understand, we want, sometimes we can want to transmit one thing to the, our children, but uh, actually we can, uh, while doing things, we can transmit uh, quite the, uh, quite the own other things. And of course, uh, I, sh I showed a lot of statistics. It was quite, there is a, a lot of statistics and it was difficult to choose it because there, there is more, but it's um, the statistics is uh, that shows some trends and it shows some very important trends, but it's in no way it's, uh, first it's not a, 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 that accurate because these are, they, they were asked, what is the situation? So sometimes if you ask people, uh, the answers could be different when, uh, when what is going in the reality. Mm. And, and uh, yes, we um, transmit some values to our children, but then they grow up, uh, they can have uh, different values. They're influenced by other things. They're influenced by something in the university, in their other family. But I would, uh, I have an opinion that of those, uh, some of the values, some of the general attitudes and other attitudes uh, which were popular in the family, which were the transmitted in the family, that could be changed somehow during the adult life, but they will be always, they will be always important. Yeah. You cannot, you cannot completely change them. So that's why I'm saying that just changing the attitudes, it's a very long process. It cannot be done just, uh, for instance, we introduce a law and then the attitudes are different. No, it doesn't work like that. Thank you, indeed. Um, I don't see any other uh, raised hands. If it is the case and before everybody is extremely hungry, I would like just to ask a couple of clarifications, if I may. Yes, sure. the, the Eurostat data, these um, these plots you showed, do we know the samples? I mean, how many people they asked to to produce the percentages that they appear when they when it comes to percentages? Do we know anything about how many people were approached with the questions? I have to check. Um. Okay, don't but worry. You, you no. can check offline, and if you want, you can mail me. And when I publish this, when I upload your slides, uh, we can add this information. In uh, yes, the... yes, I, I was, uh, I would add it, and I, I will check it. But uh, there were um, um, good numbers of people because it's a reliable data. I don't mind. I don't doubt. 
Um, and the, the other question, when Korea in Japan has a paternal leave for, for fathers, uh, is it mandatory or is it offered to the Japanese and Korean father? Um, this is the, it's not, it's not mandatory, but the mother can take this leave. So it's not transferable to the it's mother, not, but the, the, the father can say, I don't take it. The, uh, the father can say that he doesn't take it, but uh, it, he cannot transfer to the mother. I understand. So, yes. Hmm. I can see a lot of risks there. But let me stop talking because Laura raises hand. Please, Laura, go ahead. Hi, I am on the chat. I just posted a link. Um, I think it was from the OEC originally about the, uh, the child aspirations at the age of five. It makes interesting reading to see that by the age of five, most children are already uh, gender stereotyped in their choice of career or their aspirations at that age. And I've noticed in my time, um, since I was in primary school and secondary school, the number of children who are looking to go into technical or STEM roles is becoming more equal between boys and girls, but overall it's declining. We, we're getting into a society where, although we're more, more and more technological, the number of people who are aspiring to go into technological roles is decreasing. And it's certainly decreasing um, in terms of the number of people who want to go into manual skills, uh, mm -hmm. you know, engineering type roles. And I think that's a great loss because more and more you'll see uh, people, as Louise was referring to, outsourcing a lot of sort of domestic roles. I see on Facebook more and more men looking for assistance in doing things that are traditionally considered male roles like DIY. You know, people are, people are losing these, these manual skills. And as a society, it's becoming more and more of an issue because we don't have the skilled people to do these necessary roles. Mm. Interesting. Thank you, Laura. Thank you yeah. for the link. I cannot. I cannot open it now. I don't. I will try later. But just, yeah. uh, it looks yeah. interesting. Yes, because in the even in the early age, they have a lot of gender perception. Right. Um, if we don't have anybody else, I would like to ask a very last question. Um, I something in the chat. Ah, sorry. I didn't look all over the place. I see uh, Sophia Carolina. Yes, I see the question about the late activities. Uh, ah, let's take it. Yes, I cannot see. I don't know where, where I'm. Ah, yes, yeah, Sophia. Hey. St study, are there any studies on time and money spent on leisure activities for women versus men? Perhaps it could be interesting to look at the same picture for women and men with and without children. In my experience, a lot of sports clubs are mostly men, but I do not have a bigger picture. Also, as Louise adds, whether the gender of the people approached uh, about the, the who disagrees with certain, okay, this is totally different. So yes, about Sophia's question on sports clubs. Uh, it's a very good question, thank you for it. I would say, I do not know any data, of course, uh, in the couples, uh, men spend more time with the later activities, but I wouldn't be surprised if, this, if the same picture is even before that, because what is known, uh, what I know, that I saw the data that women spend more time on the, house, on, on, on the household duties and the household responsibilities, even if they live alone. So they spend more time on that. They're likely to spend less time on leisure activities, although I do not remember the specific statistics, but I would expect that. Thank so they, they spend more time, even, even they, if they live alone without any problems. Uh, they, yes, they may do more sport to avoid domestic duties, yes. They uh, even they, they just spend more time in cleaning the house, for example, and preparing food. So this this is known, and so like uh, it's likely that they spend less time for leisure. I think it's it's that. 
Thank you. Right. Laura commented on this that men do more sports in order to avoid okay. domestic chores. Yeah. <laughs> so Lu Luis uh, asked uh, an important question on the data content. For those charts that you showed where per, nas per nationality, they showed who disagrees. For example, when the Serbians said that they disagree that uh, it's equally rewarding to be a fulfilling mother than to be a well-fulfilled uh, professional, or the Swedes uh, disagreed, I don't remember about what question, uh, that showed that they are more egalitarian. Do we have the gender of the people who were asked? Because on those charts on disagreement, we have the countries, but we didn't, did we have a men and women asked? I can't remember uh, that slide. Uh, this uh, this uh, refers to the whole sample, the slides, but the gender composition, uh, the, they are um, representative by gender. The samples are represented by gender, so they are not gender biased. I didn't understand your answer, so. Ah, so, uh, sorry. They, um, um, all the items, uh, all the questions, both men and women were included in the answers, but the answers are not gender biased because we have a rather equal share of men and women in all the countries because they control for that in the survey. Ah, thank you. So very it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not because in some countries there are more men than women. I mean, it's not because of this. We control for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I don't see other hands. And uh, the audience, 30% of the audience is going for lunch. So I still will dare a last question because otherwise I don't know when I shall have this opportunity. Uh, a couple of years ago, before COVID, I, I, we had academic training by evolutionary psychologists. So at some stage, the su subject had nothing to do with gender studies, but at some stage he said, supported by at least a dozen of papers which I, which uh, people can find from the academic training indico index um, that evolutionary psychologists have found out that some of the characteristics about child care and uh, looking for things around the house etc they have to do with evolution and some of us in the audience even I as sponsor were shocked and traumatized by this, but then by reading these papers, I saw that there is really, in addition to all of these arguments you mentioned, culture, religion, some traditional societies, etc., there is apparently, he claims, or many evolutionary psychologists claim, that there is a, an evolutionary factor that sort of, in quotes, uh, naturally leads females into the household. Do you have any comment on this? Uh, could you explain me a bit more? What, what does it mean by evolutionary factor? Like, Well, they say that, for example, the, the, the women's at, um, abilities were developed at the time of hunter-gatherers in a way that men are good in forming groups in forming alliances, in uh, uh, organizing planning very well, uh, look, having vision because they had in pro, primit, uh, prehistoric times, they had to cluster together to fight the big uh, ma, you know, buffalo, which was mm -hmm. dangerous, whereas women were jealously uh, clustering around their children and with the lack of, uh, you know, traditional marriage as in modern society, they had to defend their cave from uh, compet competitor uh, female partners of their um, man or things like that. I am sorry to, to present in such grotesque manner, but time is limited. And if you, I, I, I just wondered, if you, if you have come across such uh, opinions in the gender studies that you are uh, studying. Uh, it's, it's not the theory I, I usually use, it, but it, it has some sense. And uh, I think it also can explain uh, partly the situation 
that uh, that we have. So I would add this to the other theories. Hmm. It's not no theory fully explains the situation, gender equality. Thank you. So there Very... is an economic approach. Yes, uh, there's social approach and there's evolutionary approach, and all of them work to some extent. But it's Very... interesting. I should consider it. Very sad conclusion. We have to fight in addition to regulation and uh, tradition, we have to fight also uh, the unconscious, uh, uh, collective unconscious uh, history and uh, the genes. Okay, so I'm sorry to hear that. We have a long way ahead. Um, thank you very much. I don't see any other raised hands. Uh, it was uh, wonderful to listen to you, and uh, I'm grateful to everybody who connected yesterday and today. Thank you very much. The slides will be on the agenda very soon, and the recording in a couple of days. And uh, academic training at the end of the month it comes up again with a very interesting series on robotics activities at CERN. As you know, academic training is very versatile. So looking forward to see you all in various such educational activities we have. Thank you, Natalia, and thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.